All right, first of all, just um, first day on the grass against each other, I just thought, you know, the focus was let's learn how to take care of each other. Let's, let's learn how to be great teammates. Let's get the full speed nature that we want, but let's be smart about it. And um, I was really pleased with that part of it, the guys, you know, being able to call any, any type of r uh, run or pass play, um, but for the defense and offense to have that, you know, it's a dance especially up front, you know, with the big guys. And uh, so to see them be able to handle that, you know, we got a lot of veteran guys. Um, and I just told the young guys earlier, hey, if you don't know, just step back and watch. Watch these guys do it. And so um, I was pleased with that. Um, definitely a little bit rusty offensively. You know, it's, it's you're throwing on air, and all of a sudden these windows get real tight, you know, and our, our defense is, is starting to close zones. Love the way I heard them talk out there and communicate from a defensive standpoint. Um, and I'd like to see the offense's tempo coming out of the huddle to be better. Um, attack the line of scrimmage. So that just shows me there's still a little bit of uncertainty about what we're doing, what are things called um, to get the tempo that we want. But um, that being said, you know, just a, a spirited day and uh, a lot of really good work uh, from the group. Dave, how do you feel? I, I know it's very, very early, but yeah. how do you feel like Bryce is? How, how is Bryce picking up the playbook? He's doing fantastic with it, you know, and the way that we do it is part to whole, really. So as we teach our concepts, you know, just for an example, Okay, so we say we have a pass concept, right? We're not going to use six different formations today to run this concept. If it becomes something really well, really good that we're effective at, we'll start to build it out. So for us, the formations are pretty vanilla um, so that we can just teach the concept and what we want out of each route, the depth, the footwork for Bryce, for Andy, uh, for Jack, you know. And so that's the, that's the approach right now. So as I expect him to do, he's really mastering that part of it. Um, the run game as well, you know, just starting off with like the core of what our run game looks like so that the centers can make the right calls, the backs can press it the proper way, and the quarterback can get us to the right run versus the different looks. So really pleased. Dave, obviously there's not a lot of contact in practice, but yeah. we saw Bryce throw a few passes down the field where yeah. he connected with Ian and, and Adam. What have you seen from him as a deep ball thrower so far? Yeah. yeah. Uh, deep ball, short intermediate, I just, he's a really accurate passer. I think um, one of the things that I love is I can really focus in on his footwork and his base and the mechanics of where his eyes are at when I know the ball's hitting the receivers. And so, you know, for the last couple of weeks, been throwing on air, I don't have to worry about where the ball's going. You know, he's very accurate. Andy, the same thing, you know, and I know it's, uh, they're pros, right? So people have this expectation that quarterbacks are accurate, but I know that, that some guys are more accurate than others. So I think it's the ability of, of Bryce to be able to throw to different body types, different speeds, um, different quickness at the top of route. So I'm really impressed with that part of it. Dave, with the rush that you talked about, with you know, the, the, the throwing of the yeah. quarterback, the rookie, was that still like where you thought it would be, or how was it with your expectations? Yeah, honestly, I just kind of I come with open expectations. If they want to show me that we're dialed in and we're ripping it and we can start kind of moving along the progression of what we're installing, then I love that. You know, today what it looked like is there's some fine tuning that still needs to happen, you know, with some of our vertical routes, the timing of it, um, where the receiver's turning his eyes, you know, the landmarks that our quarterbacks are throwing to. We got a ways to go. So, um, but it's good stuff. And now we get, we get to have actual film against the defense to be able to watch our guys doing it, you know, it's, I think, I think they're probably getting sick and tired of us watching, you know, Tampa, Seattle, like historic clips from different teams. It's like, let's start building our own inventory of passes so we can study it and correct it. Dave, you mentioned different body types and sizes. How yeah. does that impact how you're putting things in right now when you've added a Deontay and Xavier, yeah. just different types than you've had in the past? I would say, uh, Darren, generally, like the starting point for us is, we just put in some core concepts and ask our guys to kind of fit the core concepts. That won't stay that way. Uh, the commitment of us, the commitment of the offense and defense and our staff is let's become what our players do well. But I think right now we're still in such a general phase um, that we're not really, you know, honing in on the different skill sets of each guy. It shows up in windows, but um, we'll move guys in formation. You know, we'll put who someone who may traditionally be an outside receiver will end up in the slot. A tight end may be outside at some points, and the backs will be involved in empty. So I think we're still pretty early with that process. Dave, anything, anything you've seen from Deontay in person that maybe didn't show up in your films in view of him? 
Uh, I think I think what you see on film is is kind of what I've been seeing in person. So it's the um, it's his ability to get in and out of breaks at the top, quickness, uh, the pace of how he does it, the setup. You know, this is a guy who's played a lot of football, and so you can see that really show up when you get into the team type of settings where he can. He's just, you know, he's been playing so long. He's got really good eyes in terms of what the, the coverage shell might be. You know, where are my defenders at and where does this route stem need to go based on what they're doing? So you can just see the natural way he plays football. Dave, um, you mentioned, you touched on this earlier, the young guys. Where were they? Where did you want them to be and where were they coming in after rookie minicamp? And can you use that as an evaluation of your coaching staff and how they're teaching? Um, yeah, I think partly. I, and I, I'm... Our approach has been, especially with them, you know, only getting them for a couple of days. Like we just, it was high level. Here's what the huddle looks like. You know, this is the, the different, this is the letters we use in these formations. Here's our formation families. So it's kind of, it's really big picture. So I think I saw them just kind of saw their, their, their wills kind of spinning a little bit today. And um, so I, I, I would expect them to gradually get quicker. And I can always tell by how the huddle breaks. And if a guy's kind of slowly coming out, he's thinking. You know, and so there's a lot of good thinking going on out there, um, and that's about what I expect. Philosophically, how do you create that from scratch, that almost like syllabus, right, or what, yeah. like how you're going to teach it? Yeah, so it kind of goes in like nine install cycles. So basically on offense, we have nine installs, and it covers most of the core of our offense. And the goal is to go through those nine installs three times in the offseason. So in phase one, it's a lot of classroom time, very little on the field. So we're taking it through them there, PowerPoints, visuals, you know, video um, representations. Phase two, you get out there and you actually practice the plays a little bit more with the full group and you kind of repeat those nine installs. Then you reset for phase three. Here we are. We got nine OTAs. So each day we'll hit one of those installs. And then we kind of have like a final exam, if you will, for minicamp where we get them together. We mix them in in those couple of days. We mix all nine in and give them a chance to kind of study it and then kind of give them a little bit of us, send them off in the summer with, hey, so here's the system. This is what a typical practice uh, day would look like. And then we restart the process when we get in for camp. We saw Ian Thomas a couple of times. Catch and another one on the side. How are the other talent you've added around Bryce yeah. kind of open things up for that position that never seemed to get opened up last year? Yeah, I think honestly, again, you know, back to the point, like I love bringing in young talent to raise the level of competition for every room. And what I love to see is for the guys who have been here to kind of feel, all right, there's this new person that, you know, is, is drafted pretty high, you know, and, and we may have expectations for a guy. And, and the guys that respond the right way, they show up and they work hard. They show up and they, they keep working on their craft and they look for those opportunities to make plays. So it was great to see Ian, you know, making a few plays like that today. And the young talent, the young talent that you got during the draft to help Bryce get better this year, are you seeing, how much evidence are you seeing of that so far that that can be a big help? I think it's probably back to my point, you know, those guys are still really in a learning process, um, but but I do get excited to see them in individual drills, you know, to see, see the specific body movement of Xavier, to see JT, you know, and um, just some of the younger guys come in um, and really working on their craft, trying to master it. So I'm excited about getting them up to speed so we can really see what we have, but it's really early, you know, they've got a long way to go in terms of learning what we're doing. I have not. I have not talked to him. So you know, I, I think we're just focusing on the guys we have. It's. It's. I'm glad we have Harrison Beavis here, so that we can actually go through our field goal, field goal block period. So just really focusing on the guys that are here, and um, and I'm sure Eddie, is, he's got a plan for this whole thing. So every one of these NFL calendar landmarks is a first for you. Yeah. What are you adjusting to? What has been maybe the biggest adjustment? Oh yeah, I think it's just you know. The week ends, but then my wheels have to be kind of turning for the next week coming up. Uh, calendar adjustments. What type of load are we having on the whole group? You know, are we getting enough work? Are we getting too much work? And so Andrew Altoff, you know, he and I just check in daily and kind of, you know, have a specific plan for guys, trying to make sure we have the right amount of work for this time of year um, and really do it intentionally. You know, so I think some of those things are probably, you know, the, the
the newer type of elements than what I'm used to. You know, this being my 15th offseason in the NFL, you know, but first as a head coach, having to kind of go through some of those things. And, of course, just other logistical planning things like for camp, um, for different events, trying to build the team, and, and how can I then also incorporate, you know, just some team philosophy stuff into our meeting rooms when we're really trying to focus on the X's and O's part to try to trickle in a little bit of culture and those things. You talked about timing coming out of the huddle, but during the combine you also talked about Rice's timing, getting the ball out of his hands. Yeah. Where are you guys at in that process with – yeah, I think today is like a really good starting point for getting because really what's going to allow Bryce to learn the timing as he grows is having the defense out there to kind of see like these windows close quickly. How quickly can I, you know, if, if number one in progression is going to be, you know, off pre snap, how quickly can I get to two and three? So those are all the things that I can't wait to just get into the meeting room, study what we did today, you know, and build off of that and just kind of stack those days. Um, but this is this is really the time that we're starting to evaluate that. Dave, can you provide clarity on Amari Barna's injury? We knew that it was an yeah. injury. Did you provide clarity on what the injury is and what his timeline is? Yeah, he, he had a pretty good ACL injury. And so he's um, he's progressing great. He was on the field doing some straight line running stuff today. Um, he's been here every day working with our athletic training staff um, just to build the strength around it, his flexibility and all that the reports we're getting is great. So um, he's training in the right direction. I don't have a specific date, um, but he is out there working and he's got his cleats on doing stuff. So um, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting him back up to speed where we could have him in a practice at some point. Really, it's just up to them to kind of catch those early windows out there. You know, we're really restricted with the time that we can be on field doing those things. Um, so, and that's what they're doing. You know, you start the walkthrough period, and we have a center quarterback exchange at the beginning of every day. And then, you know, just the constant communication of, hey, the ball was here or the ball was there, or Austin could even know, even say, like, when I'm stepping right, it feels like you're a little bit short on this side, you know? So they're just constantly, they just constantly have to be talking and giving feedback immediately after each play. Yes. Yeah, I, I think it's our competitive advantage to kind of do it a way that I've that I've seen that's worked. So I don't want to give too much information about that. Um, but we were there, uh, Seattle, Tampa. We were there two years ago in Germany. Um, so we've we've had that uh, model, and then I was able to you know pick Coach Bowles' brain a little bit about what they did on their side of it, you know, and um, so we have a plan for that. I'm excited to, to get out there, though. Speaking of the, the no-prime-time game, your reaction to the no-prime-time game? Yeah, you got to earn it. You got to earn prime-time games. You know, those things don't just come along. You know, it's, it's um, every year, you know, it, you don't start out that way, and they don't just throw you on prime-time games for no reason. You know, we, we have to build something, a, a version of football that we're proud of um, and be able to uh, accentuate the strengths and talents of our guys that we have. And then I think that the world will want to see that at some point, but we got a long way to go, and we got to earn those type of ops. I'm not a negative motivator. Um, you know, I'm about possibilities. I'm about how good we can become. And so um, I think maybe some guys would be naturally motivated that way. If they do, that's just never really worked for me. Um, I don't know who the teams are. Look at the schedule. I can't tell you whether I'm excited about it or not. I'm just excited. It just makes it more real for me now that it's like a – it's on paper and it's a solid – you know, schedule, it's like, okay, now this feels real. This season's going to happen, whether we like it or not. Here it comes. And it just gets me excited um, to, to go forward and, and do that. But we just don't know. You know, the teams that start off, you know, a certain way in the first four games are a different team in the middle, middle of the season. And um, I just expect my expectation for our group is we take it one week at a time and we just get better the following week by working hard and by working together. All right, thank you, Coach. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Thank you.